To some, he was a prophet. To others, a dangerous heretic. In a world where mathematics could decide the fate of kings, ships, and souls, he dared to change the rules. He defied tradition, outpaced the scholars, and made numbers serve him. His ideas would spread across continents, and his enemies would whisper that he'd made a pact with the devil. This is the true story of John Napier, a man who made numbers obey. In 1550, within the fortified walls of Merchiston Castle, John Napier entered the world. His birth was marked by privilege and expectation as the heir to a powerful Scottish family. Outside, Edinburgh stirred with the early sounds of market day. No one yet knew that this child would challenge the limits of human calculation. John was the son of Sir Archibald Napier, a man of influence tied to the powerful Bothwell lineage. This heritage came with privilege, but also the weight of expectation. From an early age, John learned the importance of power, reputation, and legacy. In these halls, history was not just remembered, it was lived. Scotland was a land divided, torn between Protestant reformers and staunch Catholic defenders. Public sermons often turned into political arguments. The young Napier grew up hearing the clash of belief systems as part of daily life. In this world, knowledge was power, and power could change history. While other children played, John took things apart just to see how they worked. His endless questions challenged tutors and amused his family. He mixed liquids, tested mechanisms, and noted patterns in the world around him. This curiosity would become his greatest strength. At just 13, Napier entered the University of St. Andrews, an achievement rare for the time. Here he immersed himself in Latin, philosophy, and mathematics. He absorbed ideas with remarkable speed and depth. Every new subject opened more doors in his mind. Ancient works of Euclid and Ptolemy revealed a universe ruled by order and proportion. Astronomy taught him that the movement of the stars could be predicted through mathematics. Yet the calculations were slow, exhausting, and prone to error. Napier began to imagine a better way. Some accounts suggest Napier traveled abroad, though details are scarce. He may have studied advanced mathematics, seen printing technology firsthand, and met brilliant minds. Whatever he learned, it deepened his dissatisfaction with slow computation. His return to Scotland carried the promise of something extraordinary. Back in Merchiston, the rhythms of life seemed too slow for his restless mind. He began recording strange symbols and calculations in Latin. His thoughts turned to finding a way to make mathematics faster, easier, and more reliable. Under the starlit sky, the first sparks of a world-changing idea began to burn. Before logarithms, even the simplest astronomical predictions could take hours. Each step risked tiny errors that could ruin weeks of work. The scholars persisted, but the effort was draining. The pace of discovery was shackled by the slowness of calculation. Navigators risked disaster if their math was even slightly off. Astronomers sometimes spent days finding a single answer. These delays held back science, trade, and exploration. A faster method wasn't just useful, it was essential. For years, Napier wrestled with the tedious nature of mathematics. He saw the brilliance of astronomy strangled by endless manual work. Sleep became a luxury as he chased the thought of a shortcut. What he was attempting was not just improvement, it was revolution. Napier imagined numbers as points in motion linked by a hidden harmony. 
One point slowed steadily while the other kept a constant speed. By comparing their positions, multiplication and division could be transformed into simpler addition and subtraction. This insight would become the backbone of logarithms. Slowly, the first logarithmic tables took shape, the world's first organized conversion of multiplication into addition. Each line was checked, corrected, and polished. These numbers were more than a table. They were a key to unlock faster science. Napier knew their power before anyone else did. In 1614, Napier released his work to the world, the wonderful description of the canon of logarithms. Scholars opened its pages and felt a sudden widening of possibility. No longer chained to hours of multiplication, they could move from problem to discovery in record time. The age of rapid calculation had begun. News spread quickly through Europe's scientific circles. Admirers called it genius, doubters feared its complexity or even its morality. But the boldest minds saw an opportunity to push knowledge further than ever before. The conversation around Napier's work had only just begun. When Henry Briggs visited in 1615, the two minds immediately aligned. Together, they refined the system into the base 10 logarithms still used today. This meeting marked the union of vision and practicality. And with it, Napier's invention became unstoppable. In 1617, John Napier unveiled Rhabdologiae, a book unlike any the mathematical world had seen. Instead of abstract theory alone, it offered tools, real, physical instruments to make arithmetic faster. These were machines of the mind made tangible. The timing was perfect. The world was ready for such devices. Called Napier's Bones, these rods transformed multiplication into an almost playful activity. By simply aligning numbers and reading diagonal sums, complex calculations were cut down to moments. Merchants, scholars and navigators embraced them. In an age before electricity, they were the closest thing to a calculator. Napier also created the Prompturi, a more elaborate device for multiplication and division. Its complexity limited its audience, but those who mastered it found it unmatched in speed. It revealed Napier's fascination with automating thought. Each invention showed his drive to remove human error from mathematics. Napier's location arithmetic was even stranger, a method using positions of markers to calculate. While not widely adopted, it hinted at something far ahead of its time, binary thinking. Four centuries later, the same principles would drive computers. In this, Napier was unknowingly touching the future. Not all of Napier's contributions were mechanical. His rules of circular parts simplified spherical trigonometry, the mathematics of navigating on a sphere. For sailors and astronomers, it meant quicker, more reliable routes. It was yet another way he was cutting through the labor of numbers. Napier championed the use of decimal fractions and the decimal point. Though not their inventor, his influence popularized them in practical calculation. This tiny dot became one of the most powerful symbols in mathematics. Without it, modern measurement and currency would be far messier. Decades before his mathematical fame, Napier stirred religious controversy. His plain discovery claimed to interpret the Book of Revelation with prophetic precision. It gained attention across Protestant Europe and suspicion from others. In Napier's mind, numbers could illuminate both science and scripture. Napier never saw a conflict between science and faith. To him, both were ways to seek truth in an orderly universe. His tools served sailors, scholars and merchants while his theology sought to serve the soul. In every field he touched, his influence left a lasting mark. In his later years, Napier balanced two worlds, the practical duties of managing his estates and the relentless pull of mathematical thought. Illness crept in quietly, limiting his strength. 
but even as his body weakened, his mind never slowed. The castle became both his refuge and his final laboratory. Napier worked until the very end, refining manuscripts and experimenting with ideas still decades ahead of their time. Pages filled with tables, symbols and notes, his mind chasing clarity in numbers. These final works would be his last messages to the world. To Napier, there was always one more problem worth solving. In April 1617, John Napier's long pursuit of truth came to an end. At the age of 67, the world lost a man whose vision stretched beyond the horizon of his time. His death was quiet, but his absence was felt loudly in the halls of learning across Europe. Merkiston had lost its master and the world, one of its greatest minds. He was laid to rest at St. Cuthbert's, at the foot of Edinburgh Castle. The city that had watched his rise now mourned his passing. His grave was marked not with grandeur, but with dignity, a fitting end for a man who valued ideas over monuments. Yet his true memorial was still to be written in the minds of generations to come. Two years after his death, Napier's Constructio was published. It explained the reasoning behind his logarithms, the blueprint for one of mathematics' greatest tools. Readers now understood not just how to use them, but the brilliant logic that made them possible. Even in death, Napier was still teaching. From astronomers like Kepler to the captains guiding ships through uncharted waters, Napier's logarithms became indispensable. Engineers and surveyors embraced the speed they offered. Across continents, the work of a Scottish laird began to accelerate the progress of science and exploration. Today, his name lives on in the Nepa unit of measurement, a crater on the moon, and a university in his own city. These honors span science, space, and education. They remind us that his influence crosses not just time, but disciplines, and even worlds. From the quiet flicker of a 17th century candle to the glow of today's screens, Napier's vision remains alive. His tools shorten the path between question and answer a mission still driving technology today. Even in the silence of space, where a crater bears his name, his legacy endures. <laughs>